Welcome. Welcome, curious souls, to the Macabre Emporium, your sanctuary for the unusual, the mysterious, and the appalling. Step through our cryptic doorway into a world where secrets whisper and enigmas come to life. I'm David. And I'm Sarah. Together, we're your custodians of the macabre, guiding you through tales that defy the ordinary. Discover the untold stories, from lesser-known cases of true crime to the bizarre events that captivate us. Join us on a journey to the shadows where the mainstream fades and the extraordinary beckons. So whether you seek the bizarre, the eerie, or the chillingly obscure, you're in for a treat here at Macabre Emporium. Welcome back to Macabre Emporium. This is episode 81. And if this is your first time joining us because you jumped out of the graveyard because tomorrow's Halloween. Welcome. Welcome. Or something. I don't know. Something. But yes, tomorrow's Halloween. Yay. It's all Halloween Eve Eve. Eve Eve. It's when all the real spooky shit really happens, maybe. Yeah. Or starts to happen. Well, they would call this Devil's Night. True. This is when all the little assholes would be out, you know, egging your car and teepeeing your tree. Right. Or, you know, if it, they had wasn't the failed event in Fallout 76 that only happened one year because they can't fix it. <laughs> the one event everybody would wish they would bring back, Mischief Night. Yeah. That fucking sucks so bad. I love doing that, even though the game would crash on me every time and I couldn't get back in the server until it was over. Figures. Yeah, I'm still salty five, six years later. Salty. But anyhow. Yep. So we're just kind of going off the cuff this week because... We I are, was, because we are. Yeah, and I was super tired because they put us back on 10-hour days after months of not having it, so yeah. I had no motivation to research anything for Halloween. Yeah, you definitely, there's a readjustment period for you mm -hmm. when it comes to that. But that's also why I've not been on Twitch so much as lately, too, if anybody's been curious, because I never post stories on there to say I'm not going to be on. So we're just going to go off the cuff. Sarah's found some Halloween-related questions that, you know, she's going to ask me and she's going to answer, too. Mm-hmm. But... Before we do that, we got her on this day for October 30th. Actor Henry Winkler is born in New York City in 1945. Winkler is best known for his role as Fonz on the TV show Happy Days and as Coach Klein in The Waterboy. In 1938, a radio broadcast of H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds, narrated by Orson Welles, caused a mass panic across the country. Across <laughs> the country. I'm not the only one that <laughs> did that. <laughs> <laughs> And you're keeping that in. Yep. Because I fucked up in. in that episode <laughs> with cross country. <laughs> but it caused a mass panic across the country. Country. Yeah. One of the things that I learned recently about that, because another podcast did an episode like on the whole event uh -huh. about the mass hysteria and everything, that one woman actually literally got on a plane to fly to her daughter because of it. Okay. And then when they arrived in there, they were like, what are you talking about? <laughs> the fuck's wrong with you, Ma? No. The makers of Rock Band secured the rights to produce the first ever Beatles music video game in 2008. The Rumble in the Jungle, Muhammad Ali, knocks out George Foreman in the eighth round in, in the African country Zaire and regains the World Heavyweight Boxing title with the famous rope a tactic in 1974. rope -a -tope? Yes, I don't remember what it is exactly, oh. but that's what it was nicknamed. Jesse James robbed a bank in Lexington, Missouri for $2,000 in 1866, which would be equivalent to about $3.9 million today in 2024. In 1873, P.T. Barnum Circus' greatest show on earth debuts in New York City. And crime boss Whitey Bulger died at the age of 89 in 2018 after being beaten to death by inmates shortly after he arrived at Hazleton Prison in Brewston Mills, West Virginia. Huh. But that is our on this day for October 30th. Interesting. So, are you ready to get started with your fun fact questions or whatever? There, There's no fun facts. She hasn't told me what any of these questions are, so I have no yeah. idea what it is. Yep. She just said, I found a <clears throat> list of questions and we're going to go through them. Yeah, so but, we'll, we'll just do a few questions and then we'll talk about some speak shit and right. reminisce. Like, like, also, this past weekend, we went and saw Terrifier 3. Yes, we did. It was super good. Yes. And we're actually going to talk about this, because I know some of the people we do talk that listen to us actually have seen it already, so they, I'm sure yes. they will like to hear our thoughts. So, this is your warning now. Spoilers ahead. Yep. So, this is your warning in three, two, one. Okay, so if you have not skipped ahead, that's on you. It's either because you've seen it or you're, you don't plan to see it. Right. But, yeah. 
That's your warning. Yep. So anyhow, super gory, super bloody. It, yes. It was fantastic. You know, it was fantastic. And then, you know, unfortunately, we got sat by the lady that seems to be one of those wives that if she's miserable, everybody has to be miserable around her. Yeah. But I still found it amusing that she kind of weevil wobble her way out of the fucking recliners <laughs> there at the movie theater. It's like, serve your right for being miserable. Like, literally sat through that whole movie and then sat up at the end. She's like, I don't know why you guys wanted to see this. This was an awful fucking movie. Yeah, like, worst movie ever. Like, really? You fucking paid for it. They still got right. your money. Right. And she was like, oh, that's super cheesy. Like, that's the point of the Terrifier movies. They are cheesy in, the, you know, in the E style. Like, yeah, all the scenes, like the shower scene, yeah. you know, obviously... That's an old lady's trope to oh, yeah. people must, you know, fooling around in a shower. But, yep. you know, getting that chainsaw up Main Street, that was, <laughs> uh, yeah. I was hoping that was going to yeah. be the case with the chainsaw when you brought it out. Yeah. Favorite scene or least expected scene that you were like, that's fucking awesome. What would it be? Um, Like. And awesome. That was a fucking awesome scene. I would say the bomb at the the Santa Claus. Yeah. You know, the, the mall Santa scene. For Yes, that was a really good scene. For me, it was Vicky with that shard of glass because I was not expecting that <laughs> shit. Was not. When did you finally realize when she was about to do what she was about to do with it? When she went inside the first time. I was like, so, oh, I didn't expect her to, like, speed it up and go deeper. Right. So it's but, like, when she first, like, showed it, bringing her down, I was like, oh, she's about to do it. Oh, yep. She's doing what I think she's going to do with that piece of glass. Yeah. I didn't think that's where it was going, but that's where it fucking went multiple <laughs> yep. times. In a very rapid succession. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, even Art the Clown had to yep. cross his fingers at her. That but, was, Yeah, that was very unexpected. I was just like... What? Yep. So out of all three of the, of the movies so far, which one has been your favorite kill? Because we watched all three of them very oh, close together. If you can remember from the other two, because, you know, life My gets in the way. favorite kill? I don't know that I have a favorite. Right. That opening scene for the third one, though, was really, really good. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have a favorite kill. They're all equal, like equally gnarly, and I liked right. them all. So one of the kills from the first movie was actually a method of torture in the medieval times. What was it? So in the first film, when he has the blonde girl hanging upside down and sawing <gasps> oh, her in half, yeah. that's actually a method of medieval torture that they used to use. Because hey, having them upside down, gravity, all the blood goes down yeah. so they can keep people alive longer. So that was like a legitimate method of torture. Huh. Fun facts. Anyhow, in this episode. One thing that surprised <laughs> me... Was the end part where they kind of made it seem like it was the uncle strung up on the wall. Mm -hmm. And then we didn't find out it was the little brother, his skull, until right. he sat his glasses on his skull. Right. I was like, what? There was a lot of me going, what? Right. And with yeah. that being said, when I had said something about it during, you know, reheating dinner, that was like, oh, hey, I typed this home and then never mind. Mm -hmm. I'll talk about that when we're doing the episode. Yeah. So one of our listeners, Josh, you know, he was talking to me about it because I know he had seen them recently. Mm -hmm. And he was saying there's a fan theory going out that Jonathan, the brother, is not dead because you didn't see him kill him. True. Because if the with the, what the demon was saying about getting her to lose hope or whatever to like let her let the demon in. Mm hmm. Wouldn't it make more sense to kill the little brother in front of Selena, Serena? Whatever. Sienna. Sienna. It would make more sense to kill Jonathan in front of Sienna to make her lose hope faster. Not just yeah. her aunt with the plastic tube and the <clears throat> fucking rats. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. And the funny thing is for you and I, everybody's like, oh, those rats are gross. And, and then I'm just the, like, those, not the rats. <laughs> and then I lean over like, those balls are fucking huge on that one. <laughs> he, he did. I don't know if you caught the one rat. There was actually a ruby eye rat in there. I did. I did like, you catch the Dumbo? No. Yeah, there was a Dumbo. Yeah. I actually, I think that was in the last, in uh, two. Terrifier 2. What, the rats? The Dumbo. Oh. Yeah. 
I might not have paid that close attention, but I know you would. Yeah. Because I know Dumbo's are your favorite. They are. So I figured you'd be looking to see if any of them were Dumbo rats. And there was one with the big old ears. He was cutest. <laughs> but yeah, everybody else was just like, the rats, that's so gross. And we're like, aww, <laughs> they're so cute. <laughs> and that one has huge fucking balls. Yeah. If anybody has ever had pet rats or what. That you know exactly what we're talking about with the ball comment. Can we, since we're talking about the balls, can we bring up the fact that there was a day that we had one of the boys, you had one of the boys, and his nut just went bloop right in the tip of your fucking vape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was not thrilled about that. <laughs> no, that was fucking hilarious. I don't remember though. who it was, but he was dragging these nuts over my fucking vape, and I was not happy about it. <laughs> he drug his nuts all over everything. Yeah. I want to say it was Remy. Not Nope, not Remy. I want to say it was Morty. No, it couldn't have been Morty because Morty was very skittish about anyone holding him other than you. Mm. It had to have been Rick. <laughs> Good old Rick. Yeah. But anyhow, let's move on from that. Yeah. Before I get the sands. Well, we're not going to do that. Nope, we're not. So what are these questions you got or anything else about Terrifier you want to talk about? Oh, we're going to talk actually. I do. We're going to talk about the check with the podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, so just... As reference, when we got in the truck after seeing it, David was like, we're not like that, are we? <laughs> it's like, no, we have a little common sense and we would be, be much more respectful. Right. But we also haven't had the opportunity to talk to somebody of, I guess you could say, that high of a profile true crime thing. Right. But either way, we would be much more respectful, even right. though sometimes it doesn't seem like we're respectful, I think, because we laugh. But we do that. To break up the heavy. Right. It's like, I kid, me and I don't know, like, public service secret, but, you mm -hmm. know, because, you know, we make fucking dark jokes sometimes after we're on the way back from calls and whatnot. Yeah. But, you know, that's how we dealt with a lot of that shit after seeing that kind of trauma. But yeah. that's a whole other story. Yeah. Okay, so we're getting into some questions. No, what did you want to say about the... No, the podcast bit. I just wanted to talk about you know, that whole bit right there. It's like, yeah, we're going to bring it up. Just be like, we're not like that. Because, I mean, the only people we've met, I guess you could say, have a high profile true crime case as of now is the children of the Bath Township survivors. But that's yeah. different. It was almost 100 years ago, not like living, breathing and whatnot. Would I have loved to actually talk to the parents? Absolutely, I would have. And I'd be like, can we record this while you talk to me about what you saw and everything? But not be like, oh, my God. You're blah, 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 blah. You know, Jonathan, what's his face? Can we take a face? selfie? Yeah. I was like, you're Jonathan, what's his face? Can, you know, okay, would you be on my podcast? Blah, blah, blah. My yeah. listeners, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That was the thing that annoyed me. She's like, my listeners. No, you, like, she was making it all about her show. And that's also like, just like, bitch, you're just doing it for fucking downloads. Yeah. You know, I've had the opportunity given, presented to us, but it goes against the big six rule that we could talk to a newscaster that has yeah. involvement with a very large profile people number case. What? <laughs> as soon as you said it, I'm like, Jeffrey Dahmer, the people number. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to bring the <laughs> names head. in on it. but Well, even though that wouldn't even be a 100% <clears throat> guarantee because right. this is the news anchor that actually broke the news of Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah. And, but they, the opportunity was given and she's like, I could ask, but I can't say she'll say yes, but. And we we don't need all that. Right. Ready but, for a question? I guess. Okay. I know that you at some point had liked all of the Saw movies. No, actually, well, maybe. I'm trying to think of like how many of them I actually saw. Saw of C Cino Saw. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say the last one I saw was the one with Chester Bennington made a cameo on it. I haven't even seen that. I've only seen I know. like two. Yeah, I know. You told me you've only seen it up to the second one because the needle pit is when that you fucking That needle pit out. scene was whew, something else. Anyways, if you had to chop off a piece of your body, what would it be and why? I have no idea. Why would I want to lose anything? Say you're in a in a situation where you're... Tied to something, ch like chained to something by what the fuck ever. If you had no choice to survive other than chopping off a piece of your body, what would it be? Well, and I guess it, it's a matter of survival. I guess it wouldn't fucking matter. Other than depending on how far up the leg you're going to cut. <laughs> 
You don't want to be Lieutenant Dan? I mean, if I didn't have, if it was a matter of life and death, but, you know. That would suck if you were amputated, like, by the knee. Right. Would be the same height. <laughs> I never really thought of it that way, but <laughs> be like, holy shit, dude, we could see eye to eye. There's no way my femur bone is as long as your leg. <laughs> I no think you forget way. the one year that I went Christmas shopping with D and I grabbed your pants, the pants that mm -hmm. were your size, and I unfurled those motherfuckers and I'm holding them like this next to my head. And they were the length of my whole fucking body. Ask D. Well, well, when we get done with this episode, you're going to maybe have to show me so I know what you're talking about. Because I don't think that's the case. Is it? No, that was the case. I had them right here. And they were, boop, all the way down my body. Okay, so what body part would it be for you then? I guess for me, I'd have to say the same, like, take whatever the fuck needs to be taken right. so that I can survive. But if I had a choice in the matter and it was going to be painless and free, my boobs. <laughs> It's just the way you responded. In there. <laughs> it's like, my boobs, next question. Yeah. So, yeah, it's literally next question. All right. So next question, then. I'm going to start with this. I'm going to I'm going to answer this question first. So the okay. question is, what do you think hell looks like? Me? I think it looks like a Taylor Swift fucking concert. <laughs> Great. Mm -mm. Sarah just got us canceled. Enough said. <laughs> Sarah just got us canceled. The cult of Swift is going to come after us I now. I think for that it looks that. like a Taylor Swift concert because of all of the shrill and screaming. Do you know how fucking mad I would be? Oh, I know. Like. Ugh. Or it's the Apple Festival being forced to walk. Oh, behind. my God. Forced to walk behind a lady pushing her dog in a stroller for all eternity. Yeah. Or one woman pushing her three children of different ages in a three wide stroller and talking with her friends and going as slow as she can fucking go in front of me. And I'm hot and I want to get the fuck back in the truck. <laughs> like, yep. Don't be one of those people because they make me mad. I get road rage in the grocery store. Mm hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> she does and so I'm just mm -hmm. okay yeah she fucking does I think that's why she's been using like pickup delivery more just so she's gonna deal with people and plus the not oh that looks good I'm gonna throw that in the cart too you know to be fair I people all day long I know all day it's very loud it's very chaotic I do not get a break so yes the less I have to people the better off I am and the better off it is for them. Yep. What does hell look like to you? I mean, there, I couldn't really say. It's like... What would your own personal hell be? We'll, we'll ask it that way. Uh, my own personal hell? I guess I'd say management, not ask, you know, taking everything you say is, like, serious. So pretty much your every day? I'd say, oh, what? I'm already <laughs> there every day now, but I don't know. Or I don't <clears throat> I wouldn't know how about say about personal hell or whatever. We kind of turned it into a personal hell question. It was just in general, like, what do you think right. hell looks like? Hmm. Okay. I don't know. It could just be upbringing or whatever, but, you know, the classic cave style shit but or whatever. But it could also be like the game Painkiller. If you ever, you probably wouldn't know it's an older PC game. But it's just varies from level to level. Like there's a level in there. It's like it looked like an opera house full of fucking demons. It could also, oh. depending on like you know, what level of hell you go to, you know, according to Dante's Inferno and all of, I guess it varies, but you know, my, most people conjure up the, I, you know, visions of fire and being inside of a cave just because of imagery of over the years anyway. Yeah. So I guess I can't really say it's not, not that a cave, but it's just so ingrained in our heads because of film and television already. Mm -hmm. That's, I guess that's the best way I can put it is, yeah, it's just like what you think of when you, oh, you're going to hell. Oh, caves and fire and lava and demons and shit. De uh, demons. No, demons. Demon. Yep. That's fair. What are you superstitious about? Nothing. Nothing? Not, nothing comes to mind. I don't really think I am either. I won't walk under a ladder, though. 
I am like a ladder, and you know how tall that ladder has to be for me to walk under it? Very tall. I mean, we have a living superstition in the shop here. Very superstition. But it's so adorable. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about Salem, obviously. Clearly. Yep. That's my boy. I don't know. I guess maybe actual Ouija boards, I guess you could say I'm superstitious about because I won't fucking use them. But yeah. even though with a few investigations we've done, maybe, possibly, trained with with the correct training with somebody that with, with experience on how to use them. Yeah. Especially if it's a, a legitimate Ouija board, not a Milton Bradley fucking cardboard one, like a legitimate wood one. Yes. You know. What is the worst nightmare you had as a child? I don't would not even remember that far back. I have one, and it's a recurring dream. I don't know if I've ever told you about it. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I never told my mom or the sister involved about it. Yeah. I think the last time I had that dream was probably two years ago. And I've had it ever since I was like seven, eight. Yeah. Basically, it starts off with me and my mom and the blonde. Mm-hmm. Walking into what looks like a warehouse and it's just cluttered. The first room we're in is like cluttered with boxes and it just smells dusty and I can smell the dust in my dream. (coughs) And then we kind of just keep walking through to see what's in there. The next room that we come to, we happen to look up and notice that there's hooks like dried blood on hooks hanging from the ceiling. So... We see those. We start to smell like the irony smell of blood. Metallic smell of blood. Like it used to be a slaughterhouse or something maybe. Yeah. And then the light, the little bit of light that there was, light goes off and the blonde runs out of, you know, being scared. Me and my mom stay together and then we have to go and search for the blonde. Which I'm kind of surprised that's the one that runs off. Right. But I was... Like I said, I was really young when I had this dream. Right. But the blonde ran off, so me and my mom had to go and find her. And then we get through, I want to say it's two, three more rooms. And then there is a beam of light coming from the ceiling, pointing straight down at a package with a gift bow on it. That's just the quest to pick up. (laughs) So my mom and I walk over there, open the box. And it's Blonde's head in the box. Okay. But that is a very, very vivid dream that I've had since I was about seven or eight. Maybe nine. But it fucks my head up so much every time I have it. Yeah. And it never differs. There's never any difference in between me having it once, three times, eight times, however many times I've had it. Right. It's always the exact same. I can always smell the dust. I can always hear Blonde's feet running away. And then the smell, like, I get all of that. That's fucked up. Yeah, it is. To be that that young and have that dream, like, right. where the fuck did that come from? Exactly, because I'm sure your parents weren't letting you watch horror movies at that, at that age. No, and I was a little bitch. I wouldn't have watched them anyways. Right. But, yeah, so that's mine. I don't think I've told anybody that. And now you all know. Huh. So if that doesn't tell you... <laughs> I've been a little fucked in the head for a little while. Would you ever consider tasting human flesh? Yeah, I just wants to say I've done it. <laughs> nope, you couldn't pay me to do that shit. Because you already know. <laughs> you can go with the blonde. She'll go with you. Because you already know it's like food stuff that you're like, oh, this one's fucking disgusting without you even trying it. It's like, holy try it, you know, at least once. I... But, well, oh. here's the thing. I'm saying that, yeah, I would now, but if you actually had like... Like a human cut of meat in front of me. It's like, here you go. I probably actually would not do it. Be like, I thought I could do this, but it's like legitimate. This was an actual fucking person at one point. Then then I'd be like, no, I can't do this. If it was for survival, like that airplane that went down. Yeah. And I didn't have a choice. It was either I was going to die or I had to consume. Right. What was readily available. Right. I probably would just out of self-preservation. Right. I mean, well, with like. But free will and self-preservation are two different things. Out of free will? Fuck no. Yeah. So that's like what I am saying with free will. You put it down here, you know, a human steak in front of me, like, here you go. I love look at it. Like, no, I can't do this. Yeah. But out of self-preservation, I'm like, they would want me to do the same thing if it was them in this situation. Right. What's your favorite part about Halloween? 
Yeah, I, get, I wouldn't say. I guess it would be just like how everything like weather wise changes. It's like October nights are completely different from the rest of the year. It's like mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure you could feel it in the air. You know, last Saturday when we were out and about, we went to Terror Fire and then stopped yeah. in a Spirit Halloween. It's just like everything about atmosphere is completely different this month compared to the rest of the year. Yeah, like take the same barometric pressure, humidity, heat, wind direction, this, that, and the other, like all that shit, and you would. Do it in the same, a different month, and it's not going to be the same. You wouldn't get the same effect, no. It's like, it's something legitimately is in the fucking air. It's that spooky sauce. That spooky sauce? Yeah. They usually call that ectoplasm. <laughs> yes. Or boneless children. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on what type of Halloween you're having, I guess. <laughs> you know, the whore kind. My God. <laughs> Uh, anyways, so enough of the questions. But yeah, it's like, it was a video I was watching earlier about like, when did Halloween become sexy? It's like, basically, you guys could think the Alphabet Mafia for that too, because it was actually took place in the 70s is when that all started. And then that's, and then they just like, everybody can come on into our giant Halloween parade of extreme and racy costumes and whatnot. And then that's how Halloween turned into what it is in the 70s. So there you go. Yep. Do you have a favorite childhood memory, like Halloween memory? Because I know that this isn't a Halloween state. I mean, it used to kind of be, but just over time, people stopped just decorating, I guess. I mean, they they decorate for fall, like the Mm -hmm. season, but not so much Halloween. You did take me past a couple houses, but like Christmas time, everybody's got Christmas shit out. Right. Now, one is, I'm not going to say it has to do with trick or treating on the decline, but I think a lot of it really does with that because nobody does really trick or treating anymore because it's all trunk trunk or or treat. Right. Right. Yeah. And I mean, I guess it's, there's nothing wrong with that either. Just kidding. There's a whole lot wrong with that. (laughs) I, I don't know if you can hear that, guys, but my eyes just rolled into my asshole. Yeah. Oh, well, it's so much safer for the kids and whatnot. It's like, I'm not getting into this debate about that because that's going to be a whole other time. But I understand why trick-or-treating exists now these days because, you know, you have a safe space. But, like, last week's episode is kind of the origin, like, the repost I did of Ronald Clark O'Brien is kind of the origins of that kind of thing. Yeah. Now, there's nobody, one, nobody's putting razor blades in candy bars and whatnot as much as you want to believe. No one's you giving know. your kids edibles. That's for damn sure. That was going to be number two. That shit's fucking expensive. Nobody's giving little Braxton a fucking edible. Braxton and Jalen. Yeah, nobody's giving your, your ends, <laughs> kids. You know, your kids that end with E-N of some sort. Or O-N. You know, fucking edibles. <laughs> that shit's not cheap. <laughs> no. I, to me personally, I feel like trunk or treat completely ruined Halloween. The whole like spirit behind that shit to me is right. just gone. Right. Oh, and also the thing for your hardcore Christians, you're still celebrating Halloween. Oh, <laughs> that brings me to my my own personal question. What's the worst thing you've ever gotten in your trick or treat bag? Probably pennies. Mine? Is that yeah? I I know what yours is, and I can't recall ever getting those. A fucking mini Bible from the hardcore Christians that live next right. door to us. Yeah, I remember you telling me about this. Literally a mini Bible. And it couldn't be cheap either. And did you guys have a full-size candy bar house in your neighborhood? Oh, right? yeah. I don't recall if we ever had one. Yeah. Trick-or-treating in the Midwest sucked. Yeah, and it's like every year we see people post about, oh, there's only three lights on them, you know. It's gone from, we grew up, every house except for maybe like one house on every block didn't have a light on. Yeah. For whatever reason. Worked second shift, didn't want to participate, whatever reason, okay? And then it just seemed like progressively over the years as we get older, not counting the years when trunk and trees started popping mm-hmm. up, just lights come on less and less. It could be because of retirement age. They have kids of their own. They're out with their own kids. But it just seems like year after year, less lights came on. And before we finally moved to where the Emporium is, I can recall looking down both ways of the street that our old location was mm-hmm. at. And there may be a total of five lights on for about f- the three to four block range I could see. That's sad. And I know the cost of living of things over the years makes a huge play into that too. But yeah. it's like, 
There's people, you know, some of our Twitch friends that live out in California that's going to, wants to be known as, the way that they put it is they're going to be the full-size candy bar in their house because she doesn't want the kids on the streets running around. So she her plans is to give them diabetes by giving being the full-size oh candy bar God. house. God. We're going to give you all diabetes. That's her, that's her thinking behind it. She's <laughs> like, she wants all the little kids. Who is this? Spooky Mama. Is her, her username? You haven't met her yet. Oh. So but it's <laughs> recently met her through doing a Saturday event where I wasn't streaming with Heavy 0704. Is that her husband? No, they're just friends. But the husband, you've played with him? I don't think her husband plays anything. Oh, okay. They're, they just know of each other. I think they just might old school friends, whatever. Gotcha. I don't know their history, but I met her through them and she was like doing a, she was doing an event. On her Twitch stream in the past Saturday, doing the American Truck Simulator convoy, telling oh, spooky stories, yeah. Yeah, and whatnot, yeah. and so I took part of that <clears throat> and took, you know, told some stories on there too from our podcast, and yeah. she gave me a couple minutes to talk about the show on there. She also her community has a very large Hispanic population to it, so I got some folklore things out of that. Nice. And she's not even asked, have you had some time to look in those yet? It's like, no, I haven't yet, because we kind of have a set schedule of how we do things. But Yeah. But yeah, so her plan is to, if you remember word for word, it's basically she wants them, the all the kids in her neighborhood, to be known to her as the full-size candy bar house and give them full-size candy bars so that she can jumpstart their diabetes so they're too lethargic to try and go out and start gangbanging, basically. I mean, insulin does exist. Right? She's like, so I'm trying to save the hood. With full-size candy bars. Where does she live, Compton? Somewhere in California is all I know. <laughs> oh, that might not have been her exact words as the hood, but she was to try and keep them off the streets okay. by giving them diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> she said, keep them, out, or keep them out of the gangs because they live in the hood. I'm like, Something like that. rolling down the street in my six foe. <laughs> Looking for Snickers. <laughs> Anyways, God. So off topic. That's just how my brain works. That's what happens with these episodes. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, other Halloween memory basically was the yeah, actual going door to door tr- treating, and then there mm-hmm. was one house that no longer exists. Um, like they sold pumpkins at the beginning of October, and then somewhere around Thanksgiving they switched over to Christmas trees. But during October they had all their homemade animatronics that they used to have set up. And, homemade. Yep. Cool. Like nothing super fancy, just like one he I can remember I can recall he had like a hold of his head and he like tipped it off like he was holding like it was tipping, tipping his, his hat, hat basically, but it was his whole fucking head instead. That'd just be cool though. Very simple like loop animatronic stuff popped up. I just remembered like it was all homemade stuff and he had a super giant spider that it would drop down and slowly come down out of a tree and whatnot. And why well, you gotta go make the dri- devil's triangle here, go do that somewhere else, guy. <laughs> What, you never heard about that? I'll have to show it to you later. <laughs> huh. Wait, I don't explain to you. You have a black cat pin on your bag of the cat doing that, that with the pentagram butthole. That's true. My yeah. mom always used to call it the camera, said they were taking pictures. <laughs> I just kind of turned it into them because we've always had female cats. Right. They were taking pictures with their clam cam. <laughs> but, Yeah. Oh, your Halloween memory, or did you say it? Uh, I did. Part of it. Like, I did say trick-or-treating in the Midwest sucks, Mm -hmm. because you can never expect a decent day for Halloween. Right. So there were days that, like, we'd be little, and we'd have to wear our winter coats over our costumes, and you can't even see the costume. Right. I remember a year that I went trick-or-treating and wound up sliding Full ice sliding yeah. down the road that was a hill. Right. And got up, walked my happy ass home, and got undressed like I was so cold. My legs were bright red. Freezing. Yeah, it was with the distance in between from where you grew up and where I grew up. I don't recall it ever being that cold like that there. And I also, like, with it was a couple of days ago when we recorded this, I don't ever remember it being this warm either. But yeah. that's because of global warming. There was a day when we lived in that neighborhood across from the McDonald's. Yeah. Where I used to live. <clears throat> that um, E&E, 
mm-hmm. the niece and nephew. The youngest one was six, seven, and we went out trick or treating, and it was like seventy two degrees at night. So everybody, everybody was out trick or treating, and it was really cool because the fire department um, drove their one of their fire trucks through the neighborhood, and they had some of the firefighters like chained to the back right. of the truck that would jump off and scare kids. That was also the year that we were given booze at one of the houses. <laughs> yeah, wait, you don't know, yeah. So all those neighbors, yeah, they give out little shooter bottles to parents so they can deal with all of this. Yeah, yeah. I'll never forget that year. That was like the one warm year that I can ever remember Halloween falling on. Yeah, there was one also I can recall was somebody who was ended up burning leaves with inside the city limits, which you know is a big no no to do. So there was just this fucking haze everywhere. I bet it smelled so good though. Right. Burning leaves is literally one of my favorite right. smells. If any of you ladies know of a perfume that smells like burning leaves, let me know. No bath and body work stuff. I've smelled right. it and I don't like it. Um I also had to have to say in the few years we did the the uh, Halloween parties at the fire station when I was there. Doing the hay rides and whatnot. Yeah. Like that would be fun. It was. It was a lot of fun. Did they make you dress up, or did you kind of have to stay in um, uniform in case we of We didn't accident. really. The cadets did. Like, depending on what the call was, it was going out, it would be this, this, and this, you know, truck. You know, everybody was there. We, like, when we're at the station, a large capacity, like, full capacity, basically, everyone would be assigned a vehicle. So, in case it was, like, a medical call, these guys are going out, but these people are staying. <laughs> Well, matters the house fire. Guess what? Party's basically over. <laughs> we all gotta go. Yeah. You know, but. I just remembered <laughs> one of my favorite, other favorite Halloween memories includes you. Okay. Was one of Blonde's uh, Halloween parties. Right. Where the, I don't remember who it was. I can almost promise they don't listen to us. Uh, had walked in with her boyfriend who uh-huh. was Hispanic. I can oh, tell I by your face. This is you know going. He was dressed like Edward Scissorhands and David just fucking looks at me. No emotion on his okay. face whatsoever. How many jello shots did we have by I this don't point? Rem- I don't remember. I think we were eating them all fucking day at this point, too. <laughs> Probably. Anyways. Because we're like, oh, we got all everything we need here. We can start cracking jello shots now. David looks at me, just stoic. No emotion in his face. And he's like, oh, look, Eduardo Scissorhands is here. <laughs> and I lost it. That, yep. t- oh my God. And I la- we laughed about that for a long time. Right. Which is kind of sucks that Blonde doesn't have the Halloween parties anymore. Because I, I kept seeing a meme pop up today for a cute couple's costume, which would have worked out great for us. Because of my height, it was like she was wearing a shirt with the Benadryl logo, and he was just what? the Benadryl logo. Uh huh. And he was just in like all black with a top hat on, the Hat Man. Oh Jesus! <laughs> oh, that would work, yeah. Because you know, it's like if I take enough Ben of this Benadryl, I might see a Hat Man in the corner. And I'm pretty sure I said that on the show a couple times before. Well, blonde did move. She is no longer in an apartment. She mm-hmm. is in a physical house again. Okay. So maybe, maybe eventually, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, blondie, Halloween parties can happen again. Maybe we'll see. Yeah. I know that's a lot of stress on her, though. Yeah. Which in turn becomes a lot of stress on me. <laughs> she turns into a full on demon that day, getting everything ready. With for like her. a capital D at the beginning and the end of demon. By the way, we pronounce it incorrectly just for one person that listens. Yep. It's not we're saying we can actually say it correctly, demon, to prove it, but we say demon just to annoy somebody. And I think it's funny. It's not really an annoyance now. I'm sure they just expect it out of us at this point. Probably. Well, we don't do it all the time. No. But when we do, we do. Yeah. But yeah, I do most of the Halloween parties. I don't think we could drink like we used to on those for the last ones. It's been so long. <laughs> and plus, no. we don't drink as m- Hardly at all as it is now. I mean, I don't think I've had anything since May. No, well, you've had you've made yourself some drinks. Well, I mean, late part of May, early part of June was probably the last time because I have not touched that bottle since we've since then. I don't think. Oh, you have. Not that I can remember. 
like two months ago. Well, I mean, what I'm getting to is that we don't we don't drink, drink a lot. Yeah, we don't drink a lot, like enough to say that it's like, oh, yeah, we drink alcohol, like social or whatever. It's probably been like a year or more since I've drank, even when we met Paul at the yeah. Because I can tell you, probably the last thing you bought, and you probably don't even remember what it is. Probably the apple cider, not the apple cider, but the apple ciders from that distillery. Yeah, that's what I was going to go with. Yeah. And I bet there's one still in the fridge in the no, break room. We had to throw oh, all right. that out. That's right. Because of Mother Nature yeah. being a bitch. Anyways, yes, that's probably the last <laughs> alcohol I bought. And that was like two years ago because they didn't even offer it last year. And I didn't think I ever seen them post anything yet. Or it might not be the right time of year yet. It is the right time of year. It's fall. I haven't, but it might not be ready yet. I don't think they're doing it again. Who knows? Which we'll sucks because that was really good. We'll look on their page later. So here, here's a fun question. Okay. Even though you, you're not into the whole paranormal investigation <laughs> thing, but you do it for me. I, not that I'm not into it. Like I love watching it on TV. Mm -hmm. I you just haven't don't done. personally like being scared. I know you don't. It makes me mad. I know. But there's a difference between the actual paranormal and then like. But attraction haunted houses. And I think right. you doing more actual paranormal investigations, you'll actually get into it more. Oh, I'm sure. So, I didn't mind the last one we went to, although I feel like just things could have happened differently with yeah, certain people. But you cutting that part out. I was going to say, if we would have had more time than what we had gotten, because I mean, little. little we got spoiled the very first one we ever did, how much yeah. time we were given compared to the other one we did. Yeah. And people in that first one were much more respectful. Mm hmm So. Because everybody at the first one was like legitimate wanted to be there. And I think there's some right. people in the other one we've done was just there to be there, basically to drink at the bar. Right. And then in turn, it was loud and... Well, given that building was not built for acoustic value in the first place, so that didn't help matters. With well, that no, I'm people. saying, but being loud, you get, or being drunk, you get loud, like yeah. unknowingly sometimes. Right. It was just a lot of people. The sound value wasn't great. Right. For and evidence contamination. And correct. So it be through the roof, so I didn't really record anything. Right. But it was a good time nonetheless. Right. But Watching you have that much fun and like be so much in your element mm -hmm. makes it fun for me. If that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Now I'm just going to get you to do one of the extreme things you don't want to do. What? Like at least touch the embalming table or. I did touch the embalming table. Not in the way that I did. I'm not sitting on it. <laughs> I'm good. I'll touch it. I ain't sitting on it. Yeah, we'll get you there one of these days. Bring a step ladder. I'm sure it's adjustable, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, last time we went to, you know, one of those places that had an evolving table, I just sat my ass up on there. Just yeah, like, you what did. the fuck are you doing? No, no chill in it whatsoever. Right. Just walked over, hop. His yep. ass is planked. Uh, the last one we went to, did I tell you, I got touched twice. When we were there with... Uh, the dog show. The one we did with the dog show. Yeah. Did I tell you I got touched? When you were in that room? No, not in that room, but in one of the rooms. Then no. I didn't tell you about that. No. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah, I did. Twice? When? Well, the second time, that I, was, I wasn't sure. The first time was confirmed by Kevin C. Uh-huh. Because I went upstairs. So, like, you remember the bathroom was upstairs on the second yeah. floor. Yeah, it would have been the second floor. Like, which one? The one where the gift shop was? No. The, so that would be third floor. Yeah, the third floor. But, yeah. I could feel like somebody was, like, behind me. Behind me like that. Okay. So, and then I'm washing my hands. And then, like, so feel it. And then there's, like, give me your hand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm feeling, like, this, on, like, on my back, like, about where your tag would sit. Yeah. But it's, like, I know it's not the shirt of my tag. So I go outside and I go look for Kevin C. And I'm like, dude, look at my back. He's like, yeah, you got a circle about the size of a quarter on your back. And I was like, yeah, I figured because it's really warm in that fuck. And I was like, could you put, touch it where it's at? And he did. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly where I'm feeling a warm spot on my back right now. What? 
fact. You did not tell me this. Because we were going to talk about it when we were going to talk that episode, but it never got done. We didn't really talk about it. And I didn't want to tell you about it then because I didn't want you freaking out. But that would make sense because that bathroom, not the one where the gift shop was, but the Mm -hmm. one the next floor up would have been the third floor. Yeah. When I went to that bathroom, I was the only one in there and Mm -hmm. I had fucking goosebumps the entire time I was in there. Ooh, see, look at you. And you didn't tell me. Just because I had goosebumps? Yeah. (laughs) But, and I... It didn't feel like eerie or anything in there to me. You would have thought for that type of location, but yeah. And I was the only person in the bathroom, right? Anyway, and the way that door, like that building is, you're hearing someone come up the fucking stairs. Yeah. And the door, and there's one of those swinging kitchen doors, basically. Yeah, like a saloon door. Yeah, you you know, you're hearing the door open. Yeah. So I know, and I was the only one that was in there. That's. Uh, But the whole time I'm washing my hands and I felt that behind me, I'm like, don't look in the mirror. Don't look in the mirror. (laughs) Don't look oh, in the mirror. Because <laughs> I was like, do I look in the mirror or do I not look in the mirror? Kind of wanted to. We don't look in the mirror. <laughs> it's like, so the thing is, if I know, if I look up, look up into the mirror, it's going to be either nothing there or it's going to be a quick fucking flash. So I didn't even look in the mirror, even though I probably should have. No, no, thank you. So the question I was getting to once or if you ever become doing paranormal investigations, where would you want to investigate on Halloween? The day when it's the thinnest. That is a very good question. Like one of the cemeteries in say, New Orleans. Let's say all restrictions are lifted no matter where it is. It don't matter if you can or cannot know. One of the gated cemeteries in New Orleans. Right. Or fuck. That's a really good question. I think Alcatraz would be cool. Yeah. And probably Salem. I figured Salem would be the very first place you would say, not New Orleans Cemetery. Mm. I figured Salem would be the very first place you would say. What about you? Um, One technical place hasn't been built yet, and we kind of have done the investigation there. I'm not saying where. If you think about it long enough, it's a place where you heard your name. Oh, yeah. yeah. There, but also on the actual day. (laughs) Because of the, the, the Warren theory of the 30 day cycle. Yeah. Or the 28-day cycle. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch the series of the 28 Days Haunting or whatever it is on Netflix. It's explained in there better than I could. Yeah. Um, That basically. Yeah. There. That would be. That would be hard, I think. Right. But I want to be the first person to do it, though. Right. I would love to be the first person to do that there. Yeah. And also then I can stop being so secretive about where it was. Yeah. But anyhow, um, other than that. Can't really, um, cool place close to us that we've been to. One of the mansions inside of, in the city nearby that they won't let anybody investigate. There's a reason for that. Well, other, I guarantee there's a reason. Well, for I that. know what, what the reason is, but, and it's nothing paranormal. They just don't want that because I know I've had friends, family that has worked there and has told me about it, but it's nothing like that. The city doesn't want that kind of attention. They're very protective of that house. I understand that, but. Well, what do what you think is the reasoning way? Well, I know that you've told me before that that house, that they deny any activity going on there at all. Mm-hmm. Which I know is bullshit because a friend, aunt, grandmother was the actual curator for the place and had to be going out there mm-hmm. because of weird shit going on there. So with them saying that they don't want their town known for that. That's why they're saying it. Like, right. it's not going to happen. They don't want people to do it because the shit's happening, and they don't want that to be known as a haunted house. Right, but it's okay for, you know, certain cases for, like, home invasions and stuff. The wars are already known for that, but whatever. Before we get in on that shit. Right. Yeah. Let's see. So, the one secret location I've only ever actually spoken to a few people of, which I know they won't ever say. But for overall generalize, I'm not going to say where it's at. Yeah. Um, The other place... Going known as the Ruth Mirror, I'll just say it because it doesn't matter because most yeah. people know where we're at anyhow. Um, I don't know where else to go. Oh, oh, the Greenfield Village in Dearborn. I would just love to go back to that one spot where you with your backpack and That's that, oh. and then the other house where your best yeah, friend yes. freaked the fuck out. Yes. What's going there? What is going on there? And it's another one of those places that's uh, absolutely not. And I know that because it's been brought up in. The group. Um, you the you know. Facebook group. 
that they have night security and night security has to patrol those grounds. Right. And those were the people I want to fucking talk to. There. You know, there's some shit happening. And there. even though when we went there for the Halloween event, it was, you can, you know, something's in the fucking air. You're turning, when you're looking at these fucking houses, I know you were, uh-huh. I fucking was. And it's like, as popular as the Halloween event is, is like, is that an actual person or is that an actor or is that a permanent new resident? Yeah. Basically. Well, not new resident, probably. <laughs> new old resident. Their, their actual <laughs> resident. Right. But yeah, the Greenfield Village Halloween event. If mm-hmm. you guys ever get the chance to go to that, go. Mm-hmm. Family, it's, even if you don't have kids, it's still a great time because we went. Yes. And you can get hot, special hot apple cider there, that, depending on when you get it. It can be a little heavy on it. But you'll lose the apple cider. And if you walk the entire village, you'll sober it before you have oh, to yeah. leave. And they had, yeah, the boozy apple cider, hot mm-hmm. apple cider. Yeah. And fresh baked mini donuts. Yep. But the whole, just the the vibe of that place, even without an event going on, mm-hmm. is so good. But going during the Halloween event, the Headless Horseman thing. Right. I absolutely loved that. Right. And then, that's another place I'd like to visit is Sleepy Hollow. Right. And then, you know, there's the wheel, the, the wheeling right on top of the Robert yes. Frost Mansion, and then the, the pumpkin quartet in the yard, like three houses down yes. from there. So if you don't understand what we're talking, we're talking about the Greenfield Village in Dearborn. It's all historic buildings of historical significance of some sort. And it's like they're on actual streets that they built and named and everything. It's like a legitimate town with inside of Detroit suburb of Dearborn. Yeah. And like. It's it's the outside portion of the Henry Ford Museum. Yep. And these are original buildings. These aren't replications. There's yes. like one one or two buildings are re-replicated because of size. Yeah. Or there wasn't enough original structure. Like the most newest one that they built. That's mm-hmm. the one that they required under installing. That's completely different. That's an original structure. But yeah. the old Detroit Fish Market. Yeah. Most of that was recreated. There is some original parts still part in incorporated into it, but a lot of it was had to be rebuilt with new construction for safety concerns. But the newest building that they got, that's still being installed. That's mm-hmm. that all would be another interesting one. Yeah, I mean they all would be, especially the lag like, cabin courthouse of a Blinken. A Blinken, yeah. More so me for the Menlo Park building. Yep. Because you, what I told you about when I went upstairs, because you didn't go upstairs because yep. you were having issues with your back and you weren't able to go up the stairs. Yes. Yeah. That'd be the one. But that was so cool. Right. Like, yeah. how many people can say that? Yeah. Anyways, without giving your, your trade secrets away. Yeah. It's a good time. I suggest highly that you go, whether it's an event or not. Yeah. Go to the museum and the village. They're on the same lot, right next to each other. But definitely hit up that Halloween event because it's cool as fuck. Can you change it to be about both buildings now, too? Yeah. Because of alleged things with the Kennedy limousine there. I don't <laughs> know if that still happens or not. And Lincoln's chair. Yeah. I mean, all the artifacts that they have in there. The whole Especially wing of the, the civil, slavery. Yeah, the yeah. whole civil rights one. I'm sure that's going to have some... That some stuff going on in there because even they're still walking through they're like not seeing the clown costume i'm gonna call it yeah but some of the things that they use like that they had used on slaves that they have on display there that you could it's heavy around it fucking horrid like makes you just mm-hmm. angry that you're right yep but we're going down a rabbit hole we weren't well, I know. meant to go but down the one time we did go to that event we got perfect fucking weather basically oh my god yeah well besides it being drizzly but yeah. it was such a fine like i would mist say it's yeah it was more of a mist than anything else that it just kind of added to the ambiance they had hundreds of pumpkins lighting this place up yep it was just the dancing the two dancing skeletons sp- yep. were i loved them they were probably a highlight of mine yeah but yeah. And there's just little things going on throughout the entire village, basically. Like, they had vampires while well, people dressed up as vampires, like, singing. Yep. And doing the thriller and having, like, the audience come up and join them. Yep. It was very cool. Very cool. Oh, and of course the ghost train. Going behind that one house and seeing that chair rocking on the porch by mm-hmm. itself was very cool. But yeah, I just... 
that would probably be the number one unrestricted paranormal investigation place, but that would take many, many days there. You'd have to. Right. I mean, even if you try and prioritize buildings. You can't. Right? <laughs> like, you'd have to hit them all. It's like, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, you'd have to hit them all, but like, if I would try to prioritize buildings as the ones that I wouldn't fucking be landed for out of fucking nowhere that freaked everybody out. Yeah. Obviously be number one. Yeah. Um, two is the one where your best friend freaked out. Yep. Menlo Park buildings, obviously. Well, that'd probably be number one, number two, really. Yeah. Well, I'd say number two, because number one, we yeah. got to figure the fuck out why that happened. Yeah. Anyhow. We're gonna I think Robert Frost's house would be very cool, too. Yeah. And for those that don't know. It's because you're uncultured swine. Read a book. <laughs> Even though I don't read, I know who he is. But, but anyways, anyway. I think his his house would be cool to kind of just hang out in and investigate and see if would be able to draw him out with words. Right. You know. Yep. But yeah, I agree with you. So I'm thinking it's time we get out of the emporium here for the night, Sarah. What do you think? I agree. So until next time. Remember to creep it real, have a happy Halloween, check your candy for razor blades. Stay spooky, everyone. Stay spooky. All right, bye. Bye. Join our Facebook group by searching Macabre Emporium. Like and subscribe on YouTube at Macabre Emporium Podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Macabre Emporium. And if you have any stories of the paranormal, your local true crime, or weird history that you would want us to look into and possibly do an episode on, email us at macabemporiumpod at gmail.com. Remember to follow, rate, like, review, and share whenever and wherever you can and help us grow our little baby podcast.